Hello friends, this video on carbon and its compound part 27 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 26. Now we'll study soap. Before we study soap, let's understand why should we need soap. Most of the dirt we have, they are oily in nature. Correct. So the dirt is oily in nature and oil doesn't dissolve in water. So I can say that most of the dirt does not dissolve in water. So how to clean them? Because if you want to remove something, for example dirt, dirt has to dissolve in water. Some of the dirt dissolves in water, it can be removed easily, but most of the dirt is oily in nature and they don't dissolve in water. So we need something which can stick to oil that is oil oily dirt I have my oily dirt I have a water right I have water and I have oily dirt and they don't dissolve they don't talk to each other I need something which stick to this guy and stick to this guy also there has to be medium between these two right and this medium is called so please note I have a oily dirt and this guy doesn't dissolve water this guy don't talk to water so water can't be used to remove all the dirt. What should we do? So there has to be a medium between water and soap. Water and dirt. And that soap is the medium. Soap is something which dissolves in oily dirt, which also dissolves in water. Effectively, this guy, that oily dirt will dissolve in water using soap. I'll explain the funda. Understand this. What are soaps? Soaps are nothing but sodium or potassium salts of long chain of carboxylic acids. So I have a long chain of carboxylic acids here. This is a long chain, you can see this is a carboxylic acid. And I have sodium or potassium here, right? Sodium potassium salts. Right? So this is an ionic end. This guy it dissolves in water, this guy dissolves in water and this long chain takes care of dirt this guy dissolves in dirt ok and it forms a structure called miscellus I will explain that when I explain the working of soap right and if you see this guy I have two ends actually if you see this guy is attracted towards water right so this guy you can say hydrophilic hydrophilic means the one that loves water and this guy is hydrophobic that guy hates water phobia is a means fear right so hydrophobic hydrophilic means love so hydrophilic is the one which loves water and hydrophobic means which hates water that means it dissolves in hydrocarbons so and also soap is a basic thing, it turns red to blue, let us. So examples of soaps are this guy, if you see. So CH3, C17, S35, CO, Na. This guy is Na plus and so thing is like the minus charge. Or you can have sodium palmitate. So sodium stearate and sodium palmitate are two examples of the soap, right? So this guy is C15, S31, CO, Na. So two examples of soap. But the main concept of soap is there is an oil that doesn't dissolve in water. I have a mixture of oil doesn't dissolve in water. So I am using a soap as a medium. Soap has two parts. So one part dissolves in water, this guy. And the other part dissolves in dirt. Right? This guy, the long chain. So there is a longer chain for dirt to so take more dirt and then a small chain to just attract the water. And that, that's the whole uh, principle behind soap, right? So there is a medium between oily dirt and water and it is nothing but sodium or potassium salts of long chain of carboxylic acids. Just by the looking at the figure you can see there is a long chain of carboxylic acids and of sodium or potassium salt. How it works? So you have this dirt let's suppose right and these are a soap actually. These are soap. So this guy is a sodium let's suppose here all sodium. This guy is sodium, here is sodium. This guy is all carboxylic part, carboxylic part. So this guy will get attracted towards dirt. So if you see right, this guy is getting attracted towards dirt. If you see this guy is also getting attracted towards dirt. If you see, 
this guy so this part the long chain part is getting attracted towards that so eventually this soap is nothing but soap has this thing so uh, you add more soap you get this kind of structure and this kind of structure is called mesen so this guy is called this is, right so now if you see this guy this guy has trapped the whole dust this guy has trapped the whole dust in the spherical form you can see it has trapped the whole dust and now this guy this part now if you see there was a there was a dust here which was not attracted towards water but this guy has formed this spherical kind of structure called missiles and this guy can easily get attached to water this now what happens is it is it is like a no uh, cover cover to the or it has wrapped the dust with the with the element or you get with, with something which the dissolves in water so this these things are dissolves in water right this part dissolves in water if you see right this part dissolves in water this this part so with this what we have done is we have made kind of insoluble dust soluble by wrapping this with a water soluble substance right because this guy this 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 green part with a uh, uh with a circle they are sodium ions actually and this is dissolved in water and thus now this can be removed right with this can be removed easily because this guy is dissolved in water and water can take care of this correct and that's how soap works so we have dust we have this uh, soap uh, and this soap is carboxyl uh, carboxylic acid function of carboxylic acid with the sodium ions this part carboxylic acid part is attracted to all the dust a lot of carboxylic acids are attracted and form this kind of structure called missiles and this is form a ball kind of structure which is not dissolved in water and now water can be used to remove the thing and that's why if you see when you the purpose we use washing machine is in washing machine it churns the clothes in that case the only thing it does is when you get this missile formation right when you get this missile it kicks it out because if you don't kick it out it will again get trapped somewhere between the clothes right it, it is a ball which dissolves in water but if you don't remove it if you don't uh, churn it uh, then it will get uh, trapped in the clothes so that's why you churn it in the washing machine and it, the clothes gets clean correct and we have an activity for our soap so we can take some 10 ml of water in two test tubes and then uh, in one we drop uh, cooking oil uh in both both test tube and we let the level then a and b right and then we add a few drop of soap to b we shake them and then you see that these layers separates right after you uh, stop but if you keep it under stir for some time you see that uh, in in this case in this first case and you have this b in this you have soap plus water plus oil and this guy has only water plus oil right so in this after some time you will see that this oil layer is again on the top it is not mixed right in this water but in this case you will see that soap has taken control of the uh, soap has uh, formed this layer kind of thing is again is a water here and this this oil is all dissolved in the lather that's what you will see how the soap is manufactured it is manufactured from animal fat or vegetable oil right by heating them with sodium hydroxide solution that's how you prepare soap so you have fat or oil you have sodium hydroxide solution you heat it you get soap plus glycerol that's alcohol you get this soap when you heat fat or oil with sodium hydroxide solution and the process of making soap by hydrolysis or fat is called soapanification this process is called soapanification where you prepare soap by hydrolysis of fat and oil with alkalis because alkali you prepare soap using this process called soapanification see after this when you get the when you have this big uh, 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 utensil in this you have soap solution right we generally add nacl to this mixture why to this mixture spelling is wrong it is mixture why this helps to uh, uh, force soap to come out of the solution actually what happens is solubility of nacl is more 
then so the moment you mix NaCl, NaCl goes and sits inside this uh, uh, space between the molecules of this water, right? This solvent, and then this kicks out NaCl kicks out the soap, and you see that soap is all precipitated outside, and that's the why we use the NaCl. So you have this uh, the whole thing, right? The, the output which you get from this uh, mixture, uh, this uh, this reaction. Then you put NaCl in this. This is just to make sure that the soap precipitate out because NaCl is more soluble than soap. The moment you mix NaCl, NaCl is mixed with kicked out soap from this uh, spaces in the liquid and the soap is crystallized. Uh, we use soap but they have some limitation of soap, right? So soap is not suitable for washing in hard water. If you have hard water, you can't use soap. Why? Because this hard water contains calcium and magnesium salts. These are there in the soap. Uh, in the in the hard water in the hard water we have calcium and magnesium salt so this which, which is the reason for hardness and lot of uh, soap is wasted in this why because it it creates a scum scum because as I told a soap is what long chain of carboxylic acid right salt of sodium or potassium salt of Salt of this guy, right? Now, when you have magnesium and calcium, these guys displace sodium and calcium from this and becomes calcium and magnesium salt of uh, this long chain of carbon like It's called scum actually, and it, it, it is an insoluble precipitate. It and it, it makes cloth all the more difficult to wash because it sticks to the cloth. So that's the bad situation where uh, we have the soap and it, it mixed with this. Uh, a hard water calcium and magnesium and forms a insoluble precipitate called scum and that makes life more difficult right this disadvantage or limitation of our soap so we have an activity for this also we can take one uh, 10 ml of distilled water in this and 10 ml of hard water so if you don't have hard water you can take the water and you can just put calcium or magnesium in this that becomes hard water right so you have hard water and uh, distilled water in this and you put uh, soap uh, in both, soap drop in both, you put this in both and then you mix both and you see that this guy will give foam and this guy will give very less foam. This guy will give more foam, right? This guy will give more foam because it is soap plus distilled water and it is soap plus hard water and this give very less foam. This is an activity to see, right? Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.